Perfect, perfect sweet spot breakup amp. I mean, that's just, oh man. Like Link, Link Ray, Jimmy Page. Yeah, man. Uh, this is a, a custom guitar that Gibson were so gracious and, and amazing to build for me. Um, I really always loved hollow bodies and like uh, the sound of, of, of Epiphone casinos. And that's kind of what I got started on playing. So I really wanted to get, uh, you know, have something that, that kind of felt the same and had some similar tones to it. So um, it's basically a, a 330, it's a 330 body. Um, and it's completely hollow. There's no center block going down the middle. Um, and then the P90 pickups, and um, put a Bigsby on it. They, they put it on these beautiful inlays that I asked if they could do it. It's, apparently, it took them months to do, but these little Navajo inlays. And then uh, we want to do the reverse uh, Firebird headstock because uh, I really love. I play Firebird in the set too, and I really like. Um, I just really like the uh, the action on the neck, especially um, the. You can get a lot, at least I, can, I find that I get a lot of low end uh, from the low E uh, from the reverse head, uh, Firebird headstock. So, um, so we went with that. And then uh, it was funny because when I walked in here, I saw that guitar, uh, the 64 Custom ES335 over there in, in that green color. And I was like, that was, that was originally what I, I had envisioned for this guitar. But uh, I guess there was some trouble trying to find the right the right finish, the right green finish uh, paint for it. So uh, we decided to do something like this, which was a reverse green, uh, like a mint green with a, you know, a reverse burst, which basically I'd never seen before, but uh, turned out pretty funky, pretty cool. So, uh, yeah. Some of the first stuff I ever learned on guitar was from a, from my old man, but it was it was all pretty simple stuff like uh, Neil Young stuff. Um, 
I think like Harvest Moon was one. It's not, not real Shredders type stuff, but... Uh, uh, I'm not in drop key, but what? Yeah. Sunday afternoon, kind of. That, that was some stuff, more of the rock and stuff, you know, obviously I got into Stevie Ray Vaughan as, as a child and was watching a lot of his VH tapes, tapes trying to remember, uh, you know, his licks and stuff, but, you know, I, I wouldn't even try to, try to remember some of that stuff now, but, you know, just really liked the way he pulled those strings. And the way he, uh, you know, the, his vibrato and the way he would, uh, or in uh, out, and then that, then that led me to like Albert King, and and uh, and seeing the way he, he would really. Where it's like you know the strings would shake and they touch other strings. And it was almost like it would just cut through everything. So, uh, so some of those guys were, were some of the, the big hitters, and then. Um, I was old, I was a massive Elvis Presley fan, so I remember learning, you know, uh, don't be cruel. So th those were some of like I, I grew up on a lot of. Uh, my parents just loved playing early rock and roll, like Elvis, Chuck Berry, Chuck Berry, yeah. I'm not gonna play, uh, but Chuck Berry, yeah, he was a, a massive, massive influence. Uh, watching Back to the Future, man, you know, you know and that was like kind of what sparked me as kids. Like I want to do that. man like we grew up in, like listening to different stuff me and Eric uh, I you know I was listening to a lot of early rock and roll R&B you know uh, Chuck Berry Little Richard is like my hero I fucking love him um, and then you know Eric was you know li listening to you know Nirvana grunge and stuff pro jam and then I caught up to that stuff eventually and then uh, something happened in high school where you know we, I think we heard the white stripes and we're like this is insane, you know, it's like, um, there's only two people and like, like we're saying, like cutting things down instead of like, you know, more and more and more that, you know, there, there was just two people playing, you know, strumming bar chords and hitting splashy cymbals and just screaming from the guts, you know? And it was like, man, that, that's, that, that was like more real to me than anything, like listening to those guys. But then when, you know, Black Keys came along, I remember hearing those guys in a record shop one day, he was playing through the, the speakers and thinking, man, this is, this is like groovy, like it was really groove oriented. And it was that album where they had covered all of uh, Junior Kimbrough's stuff. Like yeah. And it was just all very hypnotic groove stuff. And then that kind of got me digging, digging a little bit into like more of that, that, that old blues stuff um, with RL and... Uh, Junior Kimbrough and then you know I knew a little bit about Robert Johnson and I knew a little bit about um, you know like I knew, I knew a little bit about those guys but then you know after seeing you know what those guys were doing and then trying to dig deeper that got me really really inspired to do that so Thank you. 
like, and that's what somebody asked me, he's like, oh, how do you, you know, you can't really open up as a guitar player uh, uh, when you're two piece. And I was like, no, man, I think if anything, it, it forces you to kind of think about things in a different way. Like, well, I can't really, you know, go off the rails and start, you know, getting yeah. too fancy because you still got to hold down some kind of a melody and, and, a, and, a, and a rhythm and a structure. So it really forces you to figure out how do you do, maybe do different voicings or learn how dynamics, how to, you know, bring things up and then bring things down so that, you know, you're not missing a bass or missing, you know. So, it, yeah, man, it's helped, it's, it's helped me out huge on like just on how I, I tack the guitar. Yeah. the vault sessions every view and subscription we get helps us buy guitars for kids click here to subscribe click here to watch more vault sessions and visit our website here to learn more about our guitars for kids program we'll see you next week